All right, in this video, I wanna look at different matrices and I wanna talk about row echelon form and reduced row echelon form. We have certain rules that each matrix has to follow in order to be in either row echelon form or reduced row echelon form. There's four rules and the first three guarantee that if the matrix meets all three rules here, and that matrix is in what we call row echelon form. If it also meets the fourth rule, so if it meets all four rules, then the matrix is in reduced row echelon form. And so let's talk about each one of these rules. The first rule is that all zero coefficient rows are at the bottom of the matrix. So if you have a row or rows consisting entirely of zeros, then those rows are at the very bottom of the matrix. The second rule is that all other rows that do not consist entirely of zeros have a first non-zero entry as one. And this is sometimes referred to as the leading one element. So that means every other row that is not all zeros, the first non-zero entry in that row has to be a one. And the third rule is that leading ones of each row are at least one space to the right of the leading one term above it. So if you have a row and it has a leading one term, then the leading one term of the row below that row has to be at least one space to the right of the leading one term of the above row. And we'll do some examples to illustrate these rules and try to identify which matrices are in row echelon form, reduced row echelon form, or none of those forms. And so if a matrix meets these first three rules, then that matrix is in row echelon form. And if it also meets the fourth rule, so if it meets all four rules, then that matrix is in reduced row echelon form. So our fourth rule is that a column containing a leading one also has all zeros above and below that leading one term. And the best way to understand how a matrix is in row echelon form or reduced row echelon form is to do examples. So let's take a look at our first matrix here. This matrix is one, two, three, four. 0, 1, 0, 3, 0, 0, 1, 2. So let's go through each one of these rules and try to figure out if this matrix is in row echelon form, reduced row echelon form, or none of those forms. So our first rule says that all, all zero coefficient rows are at the bottom of the matrix. Well, this matrix does not have any rows that are all zeros, and if there were, they would be at the bottom of the matrix. So it does satisfy rule one. Now, if you look at rule two, rule two says that all other rows that do not consist entirely of zeros have a first non-zero entry as one, and this is called a leading one term. So that means if we look at all three rows in this matrix, the first non-zero entry has to be a positive one. So if you look at row one, the first term, the first element in that row is a positive one. So that's good. For the second row, the first element is zero, and the first non-zero element from left to right is a positive one, so that's good. If we look at row three, our first term, or first element in that row is zero, our second element in that row is zero, and our first non-zero entry going from left to right is a positive one, so that's good. So that means this matrix does in fact meet rule number two. Rule number three is a little bit more tricky. It's saying that leading ones of each row are at least one space to the right of the leading one above it. So that means if we look at row one, we have a leading one term in the very first column. And rule number three says that the leading one term of the equation or the row below the current row that we're looking at, which is row one, that leading one term has to be at least one space to the right of the leading one term above it. So all that's saying is that this leading one term in row two has to be at least one column to the right of the leading one term above it, which is in row one. And if we look at row three, we see that this leading one term is at least one column to the right of the leading one term above it, which is here. Let's also check rule number four to see if it's in reduced row echelon form. And I just cleared up the screen to make things easier to see. So rule number four says, 
A column containing a leading one also has all zeros above and below the leading one term. So that means we need to go and check every single column in this matrix and see if that column has a leading one term that all other terms above and below it are zeros. So if we look at column one, well, column one does in fact have a leading one term. And in order to satisfy rule number four, every element below and above this leading one term has to be a zero. And you can see that for column one, this is true. All the elements below the leading one term, there are no elements above the leading one term in this column are zero. So that's a zero and that's a zero, right? What about row two? Well, row two also has a leading one term. And rule number four says a column containing a leading one also has all zeros above and below the leading one term. Well, below this leading one term, there is in fact a zero. But above it, there is a non-zero term, two. So this matrix does not satisfy rule form, and therefore we cannot say that it is in reduced row echelon form. But because it satisfied the first three rules, we can say that this matrix is in row echelon form. Let's go ahead and look at a different matrix. We wanna look at this matrix here, and we wanna try to find out if this matrix is in row echelon form or reduced row echelon form or neither. So let's go through our rules again and try to check them off. So rule number one says that all zero coefficient rows are at the bottom of the matrix. This means that if a row consists entirely of zero, that it is at the bottom of the matrix. And if we look at this matrix, we can see that we have a row consisting entirely of zeros at the bottom of the matrix. So it does in fact satisfy rule number one. Rule number two states that all the other rows that are not all zeros have a first non-zero entry as one. So that means if we look at each one of these rows that do not consist entirely of zero, so we don't have to look at row three here, we can focus our attention to the first two rows. The first non-zero entry going from left to right has to be a positive one term. Looking at row one, we have a zero here and a positive one here. So row one is good. What about row two? We have a zero, zero, and the first non-zero entry that we encounter is a positive one. So that's good. So this matrix does in fact satisfy rule number two. Rule number three says that the leading ones of each row are at least one space to the right of the leading one above it. So if you look at row one, our leading one term is here. And that means the row below it has to have a leading one term, at least one column to the right of this leading one term here. And if we look at row two, well, that's true. This leading one term is at least one space to the right of the leading one term above it. So it satisfies rule number three. What about rule number four? A column consisting or a column containing a leading one term also has all zeros above and below the leading one term. Well, if we look at each column and we try to satisfy this rule, let's see what happens. Let's look at column one, which is right here. This column does not have a leading one. And rule Four only applies to columns that have a leading one. So this first column is okay. How about the second column? Well, the second column has a leading one term here. And rule number four says that if that column has a leading one term, then all other terms or elements above and below that leading one term has to be zero. So this is zero and that's zero. Column two is good. What about column three? The leading one term for this column is here in the second row. And the elements above and below are also zero, so that column is good. Well, what about this column here? Well, remember, rule four only applies to columns that have a leading one term. Since this column does not have a leading one term, we can't really apply this rule, just like column number one. But for all the other columns that do have a leading one term, those columns satisfy rule number four. So rule number four is good. And that means if all four rules are satisfied, then this matrix is in reduced row echelon form.